Good morning everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. We are in Saturday of the third week of Easter, the end of another week. I just want to remind you that during the season of Easter, I won't be doing any recordings on Sunday. Uh, it gives me a bit of a break. But today we're going to focus on John chapter 6, verse 60 to 69. For those of you who would like to listen to a reflection from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 31 to 42, please go to my description box. You can also send me a WhatsApp message uh, on the numbers that will appear on the screen and uh, I could add you, if you like, uh, to a daily list of recipients who get the links to both the videos as well as the text of these teachings in case you'd like to have them. So we are in John chapter 6 verse 60 to 69. I've entitled today's teaching, No Compromise. So let's see what the text says. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones who did not believe and who was the one that would believe, betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, Many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, the Bread of Life discourse almost seems to be drawing to an end and by human standards it ends tragically with many of his disciples abandoning Jesus and he being left as we are told with just the 12 apostles. You can see that in verse 67. Now faced with such a situation I think modern day church councils irrespective of their denominations would find themselves rushing around issuing damage control statements insisting that the words of Jesus were taken, as they say nowadays, out of context or that he has been misunderstood and misquoted. There would be, I think, several attempts to convince Jesus, Lord, retract your statements in the face of our empty seats in the pews of our churches and obviously with that comes diminishing financial contributions. And I can see that Twitter would have been a buzz with tweets one after the other. So it seems that the offer of eating Jesus' flesh certainly did not fly well in the face of the disciples. Yet Jesus was clear and he was definitely unambiguous. He declared that he was the bread of life, the living bread come down from heaven and whoever eats of this bread will live forever. Then Jesus added the one line that caused many to gasp in horror and make a quick getaway to the nearest exit. He declared that the bread that he will give is his flesh and that we see in John chapter 6 verse 51. I will give, I will give for the life of the world, the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Now, Jesus was clear, the bread he gives is his flesh and then he labours that point, if you see verse 53 to 59, he will labour that point for the next four verses. So clear is his teaching that the opening lines of today's gospel text tell us that the Jews, many of whom who were his disciples, called this intolerable language or some texts have it this teaching is difficult to accept. Now, here is the proof we have to 
state clearly that there was no misunderstanding on the part of the Jews or his disciples. You see, if they thought that Jesus meant that the bread he gives them was merely symbolic, they would not have left him. But they understood that he was crystal clear. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Does this offend you? We read those words in John chapter 6, verse 61. Does this offend you? Jesus asked them. You see, this is a truth that we need to address. You know, so often we, you and I, the children of light, are afraid of offending the world whom we live to please. We want to make the language of faith very inclusive till it is all watered down and um, up for, as I call it, lively interpretation. Yet Christ does not tiptoe around broken glass. He is direct and he is clear. This is how the cookie crumbles. Faith must not be compromised and faith must be vigorously defended irrespective of what the world says. We might stand alone as we do, as we do. We stand alone. Christ was very clear. When you follow him, you lose father and mother and brother and sister. You lose everyone. I know that I have lost even priest friends. You lose people, but you stand for God. And this is today the problem. We have become a culture and sometimes even a church that wants not to offend, but to please. You know, I must tell you that quite recently I had a two minute run in with a religious nun who asked me something about my views, whether I, I had very strong views on, um, you know, worshipping or attending the pujas of um, people of other faith. And I said, yes, I made that very, very clear. And she said, Wana, what's wrong with you? You know, the world is moving. Even Pope Francis is so open. I said, excuse me, show me one doctrine in the church where Pope Francis has changed the teachings on this matter or the church has changed this meeting, its, its, uh, its views. You see, this is, this is extremely wrong. This is deceptive to say that Pope Francis is very open. He may be open, but he hasn't changed any of the teachings. Yeah? It is deceptive to lead Catholics into sin. And we do this because we want to sound very open. Yeah? We do not wish to stand for Christ. And this is a mistake. Coming to our text, finally we are told that since many of the disciples left Jesus and no longer went about with him, we see that in John chapter 6 verse 66, Jesus now turns to his apostles, to his twelve and he says, do you also wish to go away? I can see the pain in the heart of Jesus when all his disciples in, in Capernaum just abandoned him. Those large crowds that we are told in the Gospel of Matthew, just abandoning him. And he is left alone. Do you wish to go away? You know, at once, my dear friends, we must recognize that faith is not slavery, but it is a choice we make in freedom. I like the response of Peter. Lord, he says, Lord, to whom can we go? You. You have the words of eternal life, not the world. The world has very smart lines. But you have the words of eternal life. These, these words, you are the words of eternal life, Lord, to whom shall we go? These are not some words of tragic despair. They may sound like tragic despair. Who shall we go to, Lord? You have No, it's not tragic despair. Rather, they are words of affirmation in the teachings of Jesus. What Peter was effectively saying was, because we believe, where else can we go? There is no other place we can go to, because we believe. So it's not some, uh, you know, some tragic words of 12 people just abandoned by everybody else and now saying, okay, we have no choice, we have to follow you. No. Where else can we go? Because what we hear from you is the truth. My dear friends, faith grows on you if you are open to it. Peter acknowledges 
that when he says we have come to believe and we know that you are the Holy One of God. Ironically, the fervent words of Peter's faith are not the last words of Jesus in John chapter 6. Read the end of the text. What is not included in the text is the last words of Jesus on this matter. He is the living bread who gives us his flesh to eat for our salvation but will be betrayed by one of the twelve who choose to stay back with Jesus. You see, Judas had the chance to walk away, but this devil, as Jesus called him, and it's actually in the text, yeah, Jesus calls him the devil, chose to stay on, and he brought sadness to others. You know, I say this with a heavy heart, but perhaps it is good that some walk away so that others may practice the true faith peaceably. And I write this, uh, and I teach this article with malice to absolutely no one. Today I want to wish my dear friend Nikhil Alvarez a very, very happy birthday. I know his mother and he listened to these teachings. Nikhil and I have known each other now for more than um, 15 odd years. So happy birthday, my friend, and God bless you and God keep you in really good health. I think that is my greatest prayer for you. For everybody else, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends. Uh, on Monday, which is the 1st of May, uh, we will be celebrating uh, the memorial of St. Joseph the Worker. I will do two teachings on Monday. The first will be based on the Gospel of John, which is the Monday of the fourth week in Easter time. And then I will also be doing another teaching uh, on St. Uh, Joseph the Worker. So there will be two teachings. But tomorrow, uh, on Sunday, I will be taking a break. God bless you, everybody. Don't forget, like this video, share it with your friends. And uh, I will see you on Monday morning.